Hello, in this video I will show you exactly step by step how to properly set up the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Star Tracker in order to properly track the movement of the stars across the night sky to get awesome astrophotos. I will cover both this attachment for wide angle photography like Milky Way nightscapes as well as this one for more heavier rigs for deep sky astrophotography with telephoto lenses. By following these exact steps, you will be able to take a couple of minute exposures even with long focal lengths. Like for instance, take a look at this photo I recently took. This was captured with 300 mm focal length on a full frame camera and the exposure time was two minutes. And look how sharp these stars are. Pretty cool, huh? So let me show you how it's done. Okay, so I have disassembled everything and we start by taking the base of the Star Adventure, which looks like this, and just a regular tripod. I'm gonna mount the base directly on the tripod without any ball head in between. So just screw it on, just like that, and that's it. And as you can see, if it's tightened like this, you cannot really move it around. So if you want to find the correct azimuth, we will have to physically move the tripod, lift it up and rotate it like this and then put it on the ground again. I wouldn't recommend putting any ball head between the tripod and the adventure itself because it will just make the entire setup less sturdy and this is generally not recommended. The most stable way to do that is just by mounting the base directly on the tripod and then just lifting and rotating the entire tripod in order to find the correct azimuth. And at this early stage, we already need to point the tripod in the right direction. So if you are on the northern hemisphere, you need to point it at north and if you are on the southern hemisphere, you need to point it at south obviously. And in this video, I will primarily focus on setting up the adventure for the northern hemisphere. But if you are on the southern hemisphere, you can still benefit from this video because I think 90% of the tips I will give you here will also apply to the southern hemisphere. And just finding the appropriate celestial pole for the appropriate hemisphere will be the difference. So follow along. All right, so we need to set it up on the ground and we need to point it at the correct azimuth. So at this point, if you're on the northern hemisphere, like I said, you want to point this side. If you're looking from this side of the adventure, you want this to be pointing north. And how do you find north? Well, you can just use a compass app on your phone to tell you which way is north. Or you can use a regular old school analog compass, you know, with the needle spinning around to tell you which direction is north again. But what I usually do if I'm taking pictures besides something that is distinctive on the map, like a road, a building, a fence on, a, on my backyard or something like this, I usually just go to Google Maps and by looking at the stuff around you on Google Maps, you can see which way do you need to face with relation to like a road or a fence or something like this in order to be pointing north. And ultimately what you can do is just look up into the night sky. Yeah, there is no night sky above me right here, but look up into the night sky and try to find the north star before you even start setting everything up further from that. And how do you find the north star? Well, it's pretty easy. It should be visible even under an urban sky. What you need to do is find the Big Dipper, which is like the most recognizable group of stars on the night sky, probably on the Northern Hemisphere. And you find the Big Dipper and then you draw an imaginary line from this side of the Dipper and extend it further along this way. And the first bright star that you will encounter will be the North Star, which is otherwise known as Polaris. And you will need to set up the adventure in a way that it points to Polaris. Like this is exactly what we're trying to do here. We need to make sure that we are pointing, well, not exactly at Polaris, as I will tell you further along in this video, you need to point it at the North Celestial Pole, which is very close to Polaris. So by looking at Polaris on the night sky, you will get a pretty good estimate at where do you need to point your tracker. So like I said, trying to find the find azimuth early on by pointing the entire tripod as closely as north as you can. Then what you need to do, very important, you need to level the entire base. So right here on the right hand side of the base, there is actually a bubble level and you need to make sure that this bubble level is as level as it can get. This is very, very important. So what you need to do, because again, you don't have a ball head here to rotate this around in order to find the correct level. So you just need to use the extendable legs of your tripod in order to find the correct level. And what I usually do is I push down the entire tripod into the ground, especially if you are doing this like on soil and not on like concrete. So it can sink in into the ground. So make sure it sinks in as much as it will when you add more weight before you start finding the correct level. It's a very good idea to put some weight down below here on the tripod. Some tripods have a hook here. I have a screw, which I can screw in a hook here and then hang in like a backpack or maybe a bag of rocks or something you have at hand. And by doing that, you're ensuring that the entire setup is even more stable. 
and then just use the extendable legs like this and find the correct balance. Then what you need to do is you need to dial in your latitude right here on this knob. Right here on this side there's actually a scale here which has some numbers printed on it and you want to make sure that the arrow is pointing at the number that corresponds to your current latitude. You know, you know latitude and longitude. Latitude is the number of degrees north or south you are located. So for instance where I live is around 50 degrees north and 20 degrees east. So 50 degrees is something that I want to dial in right here and that will make sure that you are pointed pretty much at the right spot in the sky. So what you can do is you can just loosen this screw and then you can use this screw. As you can see, if I turn it, the entire base is tilting down or is tilting up. And you want to make sure that this arrow is lining up pretty much with your current latitude. And how do I find my latitude? Well, you can use an app. And the app I would recommend is the Sam Console Mini app. This is the app dedicated for the adventurous little brother, the Sky Adventure Mini. But we'll use this app further along for something way more important than just finding out latitude. So let me show you how to find latitude in this. So you go to the Sam Console Mini app and then you go to Polar Clock Utility. This is something that we will use later on. This is very important. And then you click location at this stage. And as you can see, you can see latitude 50 degrees and four minutes north. And this is what I am interested in. So 50 degrees is what I want to dial in right here as my elevation. Then you can tighten this, make it nice and tight. If this wrench goes in the way, you can just pull on it. And that way you can rotate it around and it sort of declutches from the mechanism. So you can just rotate it around like this, then let go and then turn clockwise in order to tighten further. And you will be able to make finer adjustment again with this knob even when this is tightened, but you want to make sure that you are starting with a good starting position because then when you, we will be looking through the polar scope, you want to make sure that you need to make as little adjustment as possible. All right, so the next thing you need to do, you need to actually attach the main unit of the adventure, which is this thing right here, right onto the base. So it just slides right in. And then you can tighten it using this screw on the right hand side and the main unit is attached. And then if you're doing wide angle photography like Milky Way nightscapes, you're pretty much good to go. If you use the correct latitude here and if you are pointing north with your azimuth, if the base is level, you're pretty much good to go. For wide angles, you can just attach this wide angle attachment right here. It slides right in. You can tighten this. Then you can attach your camera to the ball head. And then you can use the ball head in order to point the camera where you want to point it. At this point, you definitely don't want to move the adventure because you want it to be aligned. And you can use the ball head, you can rotate it around in order to point to the correct spot. If you're doing Milky Way shots, like I said, you probably want to face it like away because the Milky Way is in the south direction and you're pointed north. So something like this, tighten everything. And then the adventure, when you turn it on and you turn it on by just rotating this dial into the star position like this, and then make sure that this switch is actually turned into the correct hemisphere. So if you're on the Northern hemisphere, this needs to be turned into N. And if you're in the Southern hemisphere, obviously this switch needs to go into S and then you're pretty much good to go. However, if you are doing deep sky astrophotography, then this kind of alignment is definitely not going to be enough. We need to look for the polar scope, which by the way is located right here, and make sure that we are pointed at the North Celestial Pole as close as we can, because with longer focal lens, this will definitely be of impact. So let's take this off. And then, as I said, we need to look for the polar scope, which is right here. It is just a little scope that you can see stars from. And then you want to make sure that you are pointed directly at the North Celestial Pole in order for the tracking to be successful, even with long focal lengths, like for instance, this 70 to 300 millimeters. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you take the rear cap off, which I already did. And there's also a little cap in the front. So I want to take it off as well. And then you just need to physically crouch behind the tracker and look through the scope. And at this point, if it's dark enough outside, you should be able to see some stars. If you don't see any stars in the scope, that means that your polar scope is probably just out of focus. And what you need to do is just rotate this tiny ring at the very rear of the polar scope 
in order to actually focus it on the stars. So you just need to look and just turn this ring until you see some stars in the scope. And you will probably see more than one star, unfortunately. And the way to tell which one is Polaris, I don't really know for sure how to distinct that. You can look at the patterns of stars in some kind of an app to see what exactly is in the vicinity of Polaris to determine which one is Polaris. But if you did the preliminary alignment correctly, which is the azimuth and the tilt, then the stars that you will see in the scope, probably the brightest star in the stars that you will see in the scope will be Polaris. So what I do is just, I assume that the brightest star that I see in the scope after doing the preliminary alignment is Polaris and I'm just trying to align this star with the proper marking on the scope, which I'm about to explain right now. So if you look for the scope, there is stuff printed in the front of the scope to help you align Polaris with the place with the scope where it actually needs to be. So the entire tracker is pointed directly at the nose, celestial pole. So what you can do is you can use the reticle illuminator that comes with the tracker. So let me just grab it. Okay, this is this little device right here. And what you can do, you can actually put it right here on the front and you can turn it on by turning this dial you can control the brightness, so I just crank it up all the way. And there's a little tiny red light right inside, so if you look for the scope, you will actually see the markings on the scope illuminated with red light and also the stars. So this is perfect in order to find the correct alignment. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to release the clutch of the main tracker right here. So you just need to turn this black ring counterclockwise in order to release this so you can move this freely, rotate it around like this. And then you need to make sure that the markings that are inside the scope, there's a 0, 3, 6 and 9. It's like on the analog clock. I need to make sure that 0 is straight up, 6 is down, 3 is to the right and 9 is to the left. So you just need to rotate this around in order to align the crosshairs like this so it's vertical and horizontal. And then, like I said before, Polaris is not exactly at the North Celestial Pole. It is very close to it, but it's not exactly at the North Celestial Pole. So what it means is that it actually rotates with a tiny, tiny circle around the actual North Celestial Pole. And this tiny circle is the circle that you will see printed out inside this polar scope. So what you need to do essentially is you need to align Polaris with some spot on this circle and that will make sure that you are actually pointed at the North Celestial Pole. I probably said it like a million times, North Celestial Pole, North Celestial Pole, North Celestial Pole. Anyway, in order to find out in which exact spot on this circle do you need to put Polaris, we need to go back to the SAM console mini app. So right here we are on the location screen and we go back and right here we have this crosshairs and this ring. And this is exactly what you will see inside the scope. Like I said, zero needs to be up, six down, three to the right and nine to the left. And then do you see this little gray spot on the circle right here? This is where you need to put Polaris in given your current time and your current longitude. This app takes those into consideration in order to tell you in which exact spot do you need to put Polaris in order for the crosshairs to actually be pointing at the North Celestial Pole. I said it again. All right, so what you need to do is you just need to look for the scope and then you can use these two screws in order to turn the entire tracker in order to fine tune your azimuth. So you just need to look for the scope and then turn these. If you turn these in the same direction, like if you turn them towards you both or away from you both, it will turn ever so slightly. But the turn you can do with this is very tiny. It's definitely not going to be able to make a full rotation. So that's why it's so important that you start with a good starting position. Once you are done fine-tuning the azimuth, it's a good idea to turn each separate screw all the way clockwise until it doesn't want to go anymore, like this, and then the other one, because that will actually make sure that your base will not be able to turn. Otherwise, if those screws are not screwed in all the way, like this, it may be possible to just turn it like this. And also, as you can see, it's a good idea to start the entire setup from like a middle position right here, because that's the screw and that's the hole right here in this white thing that allows it to move around. And if you start from the middle position, you are ensuring that once you are in the fine tuning phase, you are actually be able to turn it both left and right. So just make sure to tighten these screws once you're done. So adjust these in order to put it horizontally in the correct spot like I checked in the app before, and then use this screw to fine tune your tilt. And then when you see Polaris actually point in the exact spot on the reticle, like you checked in the app, that's where you know that you are pointed at North Celestial Pole. 
right. At this point, you can take off this illuminator and you can actually mount your declination bracket. So like I said, this setup is mainly for long telephoto lenses like this one. And when you're using a lens like this, it probably makes sense to not mount the camera directly on the tripod screw right here, but instead use a mounting ring like this one to mount your lens on it and use this tripod attachment to actually attach it to whatever you're attaching it, in this case, to this dovetail. And then let's put the camera inside it. Make it nice and tight so it doesn't fall off. And then we are pretty much good to go. And then I'm gonna turn the entire tracker. I'm gonna turn the entire tracker so you better see what's going on because this step is also very important. But of course, don't turn your tracker at this point when you are properly aligned. I'm just doing it so you can better see what's going on. And I'm also gonna tilt it down again in order to show you what's happening here. So at this point, you want to mount your camera right here and be careful while you do it so you don't drop your camera and you just make it nice and tight make sure it's tightened so it doesn't fall out and then when the clutch is released if you let it go it will start turning on its own and that means that this is actually not balanced so what you need to do like i said this is very important you need to make sure that this declination bracket is actually balanced because if it's not then the tracking will not be effective, you will drain your batteries, and basically the result will be not as good as it could be. So what you need to do in order to balance it, if it goes in this direction, that means that more weight is put on this side. So you need to unscrew the counterweight and just move it upwards. Slightly, maybe more, something like this, let's try. If I let it go, it still turns, but less. So I need to make sure it's up again even more and yeah that means that i'm correctly balanced because if i let go the camera doesn't turn on its own and in any position it just stays and as you can see i didn't put any ball head in between my camera and the dovetail and the reason for that is again because i want to make sure that the entire setup is as sturdy as possible and right now you could ask me well how am i supposed to point my camera at stuff when it's mounted directly like this without any ball head well it turns out that it actually is possible with this setup and i will be making a separate video on how to point your camera for deep sky astrophotography on the star adventure how to find the correct target that you want to actually photograph on the night sky and how to point the camera at your target without using the ball head with the dovetail here in order to ensure that the entire setup is as sturdy as it can be so definitely Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on that video. But at this point with the declination bracket balanced like this, you are pretty much good to go. You just need to find your target and start taking photos. Was it easy? Was it hard? If you have any questions, if any part of the video was confusing to you, definitely leave a comment down below. I answer every single comment on YouTube. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up down below. It really makes a difference. And like I said, consider subscribing to the channel because there will be more videos like this. I have a video about blending images together when you're taking nightscapes for Milky Way photography. So, you know, you have a ground shot and you have the sky shot and you need to blend those together. A video about that will be coming out very soon. Also, check out the videos I have on my channel already because I have already a bunch of astrophotography tutorials and also other tutorials related to photography and filmmaking. Basically, my channel is about everything you can do with your camera. So if if any of that is interesting to you, definitely consider subscribing and checking out my channel. But that's it for now. Have a good day. See you next time and bye bye.